Welcome to the second and last part of going through all the Obsidian Core plugins. Last time we stopped after the Outgoing Links plugin and now we continue with the Outline plugin. If you missed the first part, you will find the link to it in the description of course. So let's go! The next plugin also helps us finding our way, but this time it's not links or connections to other nodes. It's about the current nodes structure. We activate the Outline plugin and can see yet another icon above the right hand pane. Clicking on it without having a node open does not do too much. So let's open node 3 and we will see that this little window with the document outline can come in very handy if we have long nodes, assuming they are structured with headings of course. We can easily jump from heading to heading instead of having to scroll through pages and pages of text. Speaking of quick navigation, the next core plugin helps with quickly viewing nodes and is aptly called the Page Preview plugin. This plugin comes with a few settings which we can see after activating it. All these toggles let us configure whether the preview shall be displayed automatically or if we need to hold the control key to do so. Generally, this preview option is available in various views, including the search, backlinks and outgoing links views, we already saw those in action, as well as in the files, bookmarks, outline and graph view. In the node itself, the page preview works in both the editing, including the source mode, and in the reading view. Personally, I prefer using the control key unless I am already in the reading view. And this is how it looks like. Let's open node 1 in reading view. Here we have two links and of course the various plugins in our side panes. If we now hover over a link in a node, we will get the preview of this node and can also scroll through it. If we switch to edit mode and hover, nothing happens unless and until we also press the control key. So this behaves as we would expect based on the plugin settings. Let's also check the other previews. Regardless of reading or edit mode, we always need to press control to activate the page preview in the side panes in files, bookmarks and outgoing links. I have two quick tips for you. First, Preview works not only for nodes, but also for paragraphs. If you have a long node, let's take node 3 as an example, and want to quickly check what you wrote in a certain paragraph, you don't necessarily have to scroll around. Just hover over the respective heading and press the control key. Second, we can preview content inside of previews, basically preview section, if you like. Back in node 1, we can hover over the link to node 2, and in the preview of node 2, we can see a link to the node selection. And if we hover over that one and press control, we see the preview for this node too, and so on and so forth. If you like to keep your vault's properties clean and want to manage them centrally, the Properties View plugin is your friend. We activate it and see that there are no plugin settings. But back in Obsidian, we can see another icon above the right hand pane. Clicking on it gives us a list of properties in our vault and how many nodes are using each property. Here we can also rename properties and change the type by right clicking on one and using the context menu. The last option in the context menu lets us unassign the property type which basically removes the property from your vault. Note that this can of course only work if no nodes are actually using this property. Next in our list is the Publish plugin. I cannot demo that one because after trying it, I decided not to keep paying for it. Basically, it allows you to publish notes based on criteria such as tags, properties and location to a website. This really works well and fast. You can control your content directly from Obsidian, which is super convenient. So if it's that great, why am I not using it? Well, there is one drawback that is a showstopper for me. Various plugins working with code blocks are not supported by the Publish plugin. And since I use Data View extensively, the Obsidian Publish feature is really not what I need. If you don't have this use case and just want to publish your text, notes, images, etc., then this is a great solution. Let's take a quick look at the Quick Switcher plugin. As the name suggests, this allows us to switch between nodes very, well, quickly. As always, we activate the plugin and take a look at its settings. There are only two in this case. The first one lets us limit the search scope to existing files only. And the second one allows us to include attachments in the search. We will stick to the default settings which are off for showing existing files only and on for showing attachments. 
Back in Obsidian, we find yet another icon in the ribbon for opening the quick switcher. Alternatively, we can use the default hotkey Ctrl and Q. This opens a dialog where we can enter any string that is part of a file name. So we can search for node and we'll get a list of all the matching results. Let's open node 1. This was very straightforward because that node already existed. Let's add a link to node 4 here. We know that this node does not exist yet. And we can also see that the link is slightly darker than those of existing nodes. Now let's open the quick switcher and search for node again. This time node 4 shows up, but it also has a little icon next to its name, indicating that it does not exist yet. If we click on it, the node will be created in the root directory of our vault. And what about attachments? I copied some images into this vault. You can see them over here. Now we can open the quick switcher, search for obsidian, and we'll see that we do not only get the node called obsidian URL as a result, but also one of these pictures. We can click on it and it will open. I have to admit that the next plugin is one of the strangest for me personally. It's the random node plugin, and it simply opens any node from your vault randomly. As this is supposed to be completely random, you won't be surprised that we don't have any configuration options after activating the plugin. As always, we do have the option to trigger the plugin via this new button in the ribbon or via the command palette. Every time we trigger it, one of our existing nodes will be opened. As mentioned, personally, I have no use case for that, but I did see some posts from people using and liking this plugin. If you're one of them, I wish you happy randomizing, and maybe you could share your use case with the rest of us. Contrary to the previous plugin, I very much understand the appeal of the next one. Search is simply essential for me, and I would assume for pretty much everybody else. Once again, we activate the plugin, have no settings to configure, and can jump right into using it. We can open the search by clicking on the search icon above the left hand pane. Alternatively, we can do it via the command palette, which we can open with the hotkey Ctrl P or more directly with its own hotkey, Control shift f Either way, we will be asked to enter our search criteria. If you have been watching the chapter about the graph view, then this will look familiar. We can filter our results based on various criteria such as path, tags, or properties. And we can combine these criteria to create more advanced searches. Like in this case, where we search for nodes with the tag bj, which stands for bullet journal, and then exclude all the results from the path 99 templates. Be honest, are you familiar with the slash commands plugin? If so, respect. If not, I think you're going to like the next couple of minutes. When activating it, we see in the plugin's short description that we can trigger commands in the editor by using the forward slash key. Frankly, this doesn't sound impressive and there are no further settings, but check it out. Remember how I said that we can quickly open the command palette with the control P hotkey? Well, what if I told you that we don't even have to do that anymore? At least not for everything. Now we can simply open a node, start writing, and whenever we need to run a command, just type a forward slash and part of the command we are looking for. This is even faster and super easy to use. So I admit I have not been using it a lot myself, but I definitely activated it for myself now. If I say presentations, you probably think PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides, or even Miro boards. But did you know that Obsidian has a built-in Slides plugin? Yep, true story. We activate the plugin, cannot configure anything, and simply jump into creating the slides. I prepared a folder called Slides, where we can create a new node. Let's call it Slides 1, and make sure we are in source mode. It works just as well in preview mode, but with source mode, it's a bit clearer for you to see what I'm doing. To identify slides in Obsidian, we use three dashes. Here is a very basic example with only a short text. We can test this by opening the command palette, Control P, you remember, and search for start presentation. We can also use markdown formatting and even add images to our slides. Well, that's a bit too big. Let's move the image to the next slide. To do so, we just add another three dashes to start and end the slide block, move the image in between them, and start the presentation again. While in presentation mode, we can navigate back and forth. Is this anywhere near as powerful as dedicated presentation tools? No, of course not. But it's lightweight, lets you reuse your existing nodes by embedding them or individual text blocks like so. I think that's pretty cool. Full disclosure. 
We cannot cover the next core plugin in all its glory. This would require a dedicated video. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. I'm talking about the Sync plugin. Let's take a bit of a closer look at least. The Sync plugin comes with a whole bunch of settings after activating it. I'm showing this for my production world because this is the one for which I have a Sync subscription. Initially, there is only one button. You will have to create or select an existing remote vault with which you want to synchronize the local one. After that, you get all the settings to control the plugin. The first section is about the basic information of your remote vault. Sync status, here you can also pause the sync if you want to, and local device name. This is relevant when looking at the activity log. The activity log shows everything that sync does. We can use the drop down menu at the top to only show errors or sync conflicts. At the bottom of the log, we have the option to copy it to the clipboard. Similar to the previously shown file recovery plugin, we also have the option to view deleted files and restore them if we want to. It might be that it takes a bit to see the list of deleted items, so be patient. We also get some information about the used and available storage. While this seems straightforward, I noticed that I use approximately 800 megabytes of storage, but locally my vault is only 325 megabytes. I honestly have no idea where this delta comes from. If you know, perhaps you can share the answer with the rest of us. In the selective sync section, we can fine tune what exactly shall be synchronized. Here we can exclude folders, for example, my archive folder, and decide which file types we want to sync on top of the default markdown files. And under Vault Configuration Sync, Obsidian lets us configure whether we want to synchronize our settings, themes, hotkeys, and plugins. Here we can also see the version history of our settings files and, as before, see any changes and restore earlier versions. This can be useful if something stops working that might be fixed by rolling back to an earlier version of one of the settings files. Remember the Show Properties plugin? Well, the next one is similar, but focused on tags. This is another plugin where we don't need to configure anything. We just activate it and then, back in Obsidian, we can see the tags icon above the right-hand pane. If we click on it, we get a list of all the tags in our vault. We can change the sort order, show nested tags as a tree or a flat list, and if we have a long tree, collapse or expand all the folders. Currently, there are not many tags in this vault, so let's add some. I will just go through some of the nodes and add tags to indicate that these are demo nodes and to which plugin they relate. While I am doing that, you can see that the tags list updates automatically, and we also see how many nodes are using which tag. Depending on our preference, we can use simple tags or nested ones. Of course, we can also use a combined approach. In this example, I have a bunch of simple tags like demo, bookmark, etc. But also a nested one with bj slash daily. As it is so often the case, there is no single right way to use tags. It depends on what works best for you. The templates plugin is very useful for standardizing and creating our various node types quickly and consistently. After activating the plugin, we go to its settings. The one thing we have to do for the plugin to work is to define the folder in which it shall look for templates. In this demo, that's the folder 99 templates, not red balloons. If we want, we can also define the date and time format. If we don't change anything, the default formatting will be year, month, day, and the 24 hour time format. If we are not sure how to format these correctly, we can use the format reference, a link to which is right here. With this reference page, we should be able to create any custom date and time format we might ever need. Let's create a new template in the folder 99 templates and call it TPL meeting. Inside the template, we can use variables that will be replaced with actual values when we use the template to create a node. So let's add a front matter field called created and use the variables date and time. To distinguish words from variables, we need to put them into double curly brackets, like so. We also add the field tags and give it the value meeting. This will help us to find all meeting nodes if we ever want to with a query. In the node itself, we add a heading one with the variable title, again in double curly brackets. Then we just add a bit of structure for things we typically want to have in meeting nodes, like participants, agenda, a space for the actual nodes and for some action items. Next, we create a new node and give it a title. Inside the node, we can either click on the Insert Template button in the ribbon to the left, use the command palette with the hotkey Ctrl P, 
or use the slash command to do the same. Either way, Obsidian will ask us to pick the correct template, which is TPL meeting in our case. We confirm this and the node will be populated automatically. And if we think we will have to take a lot of nodes of the same type, we can simply go to the settings, hotkeys, search for insert template and assign a hotkey of our choice. For example, Alt and I. We can do the same for create new node, but using Alt and N. Click out of the settings and now we can simply press Alt N to open a new node and give it a title. Then we press Alt I, confirm the meeting template and we are good to write down all the important things that happened during our meeting. If you're using the Zettelkasten method, the next core plugin is your friend. It is called Unique Node Creator and lets you create nodes where the node title automatically comes from a timestamp that you can format as you wish. The plugin configuration is very straightforward. We activate it and go to settings. Here we tell it where to create new nodes. I prepared the folder Unique Nodes for this and which template to use. Once again, I prepared a template called TPL Zettelkasten, which is of course in our usual templates folder. The last option lets you define the format of the unique timestamp string. By default, it uses year, month, day, hour, and minute. This should work fine in most cases. If you often create multiple nodes within a minute, you might want to add the seconds to the timestamp. Once again, the previously mentioned format reference will tell you all you need to know about it. Back in Obsidian, we notice a new icon in our ribbon that lets us create a new unique node. As always, we can also use the command palette for that. As soon as we click the icon, the new node will be created with the timestamp in the defined format as its name. We are almost through. The second last core plugin is the word count plugin. And you won't be surprised to hear that it counts the words inside the current node. Let me show you anyway. As always, we activate the plugin. There's nothing to configure this time. And then we go back to Obsidian. If we have a node open, we will see the number of words and characters in this node displayed in the bottom right hand corner of Obsidian. By default, the plugin counts all the words in the node. But if we select a segment of the node, then we see how many words and characters are in that selection only. Useful if you want to make sure not to exceed a certain word or character limit. Workspaces is a very subtle yet really helpful plugin that allows us to quickly change Obsidian's layout depending on what we want to do. We just need to turn it on and can start using it without needing any configuration. Once again, there is a new icon in our ribbon that lets us manage our workspace layouts. And as always, we can also get there via the command palette. Before we go there, let me open this node called default workspace. This just serves as an admittedly not very impressive Example. Of course, this could be any node or dashboard or even a canvas drawing. We also arrange our side panes in a way that makes sense for us in most cases. The file navigation on the left, file properties, local graph and outgoing links on the right. Then we go to manage workspace layouts, call this one default and click save. We see that the layout is saved and currently active. After all, it's the only one. Let's close this dialog and rearrange Obsidian a bit. Open two nodes in parallel, close the left hand pane and show document outline, local graph and file properties in the right hand pane. Then we go to manage workspace layouts again, call it compare and hit save. Now we can see both our layouts with the compare layout being the active one. We can now click on load next to default and get the initial layout again. Let's add one more layout where we close the side panes completely and hide the ribbon. Press Ctrl P, search manage workspace and save it as Focus. Now we can use the command palette to switch between these layouts. Press Ctrl P, search load workspace and select the one you want from the list. Here's another tip. I recommend setting up a hotkey for loading workspaces. We can do this by going to settings, hotkeys, searching for load workspace and clicking on the plus icon. I use the combination Alt L. Back in Obsidian, we can then use this hotkey and get the list of available workspace layouts to pick from. Very fast, simple, and effective. And that, together with the first part, covers the whole list of the 27 core plugins in Obsidian 167. As you can see, Obsidian and its core plugins are very powerful all by themselves. Depending on your needs, you might still want to add community plugins. I sure did so myself. My only advice is to think twice before doing so. Otherwise, you might easily find yourself spending, or rather wasting, a lot of time on learning and customizing a plugin rather than using Obsidian productively. Again, 
I'm speaking from experience here. Detailed documentation for each Obsidian Core plugin can be found on the official Obsidian help page. I left the link in the description for you. I really hope this helped you understand Obsidian's Core plugins better and, if so, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. And if you could share it with whoever might be interested, that would be great too. If you need help or have any questions, the YouTube comments might not be the easiest way to interact with each other. Alternatively, you can find me on your preferred social media platform. You can find all the links to my profiles in the description as well. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.